Alabama there? Um, I am. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I arrived late last night. And um, after I've finished this interview with you, I'm heading to the arena and to the practice, to have a practice um, today and check it out. And then tomorrow, matches begin. All right. I noticed um, in Rokla, Poland, you placed, and then in, two thirteen, in 2013, you got third place at the, what do they call it, the WWF? No, in, in Colombia, which was 2013 World Games, I placed, I got the bronze medal. Okay. And then in Poland, which was 2017, I mm -hmm. actually didn't place. Um, I lost my first or second match, I believe. Right. So, yeah. So this one, um, you know, hopefully we can uh, do better than the bronze medal, but one match at a time and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> how do they go about choosing the players for this? There's an extensive uh, quota, basically. Um, what it is, is I believe if it's, if you're a world champion, they take the world champion. Uh -huh. It's either the world champion or the ranked, ranked number one. I'm not sure which, but world ranked number one or world champion. They take that per person from the men and the women. Uh -huh. And then the Europe get X amount of spots. So they'll take the European champion and maybe European number two. Then they'll take the European nine ball champion and possibly, I don't know if they do the European 10 ball champion or not. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but four spots for Europe, two spots for America. So it's the highest ranked American, uh, mm -hmm. two Americans. Then Canada have a spot. Then we've got Japan and so on and so forth with the other countries that, that send uh, it's a total of 16 players and they send their best players um, wow. based on the country's ranking. Quite an honor. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It is an honor. Um, the years that I, when I wasn't the current world champion, so I didn't get the spot that way, uh -huh. I had to go to Europe to qualify. So I had to go to the European nine ball championship right. and try and win that um, in order to get a spot, which is what I managed to do uh -huh. uh, for the last two events. So, uh, yeah, it is an wow. honor. And it's... Uh, you know, it's it's something that's a, still a dream of mine to get a gold medal. Um, yeah, be pressure on myself, but you know, hopefully. Hey, you've been yeah. on a roll this year. Let's. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. If not this time, I'll have to wait four more years to try again. Uh, I'm not getting any younger, but still, of course, you know, I'll uh, I'll be go gunning for that gold medal until right. I quit playing. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I know that that sudden death match. I the in Bremen, Germany had me wow. group yeah. in the chair rooting for you to win. And I was like, oh my God. First it's <laughs> shootout, then they go to sudden death. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, Kat, honest to God, I I started off really slow in that match and uh -huh. um, Elo played really well. She really come out firing. She did. And, and in the second set, there was one shot in particular, which was a, car a combination she played uh, uh -huh. with the three ball that she played poorly and had to uh, play safe on the three. She didn't leave herself a shot. And that kind of switched the match around. And I started, you know, running out then and playing better. But I thought to myself when, when I tied it at 1-1, one, one, to be honest, I really, the way she were playing and the way I were playing, I really could have easily been out already and got second place already because... She was definitely playing better than me. Um, so I was so relieved just to even get to the shootout. I kind of tried. Mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I watch it back, I'm, it makes me more nervous than how I felt then because I just tried to think to myself, you know, you're lucky to be having a chance with a shootout. And I just tried to relax. And I look so calm and I don't know. <laughs> I really, when I watch it, I'm not as calm as actually what, what I was feeling in there <laughs> because normally you know especially the more and more it went on and on and on right. you get more nervous and I don't know I don't know that day that time I just how I, if you put me back in that situation again I'd probably be a lot more nervous but yeah I really uh, kept calm which is something that I would like to bottle and be able to use anytime I wish which is it's impossible to do isn't it Right. Um, what mental preparation do you, does it take 
to play the top women's competitive level? Well, uh, you know, I've been asked this before and it's something that I've not got an answer for that. There's not, a, I don't believe there's an answer really because I think that I don't do anything in particular to prepare mentally. I have over the years meditated. I still do, but I wouldn't say it's a ritual. I don't do it every day. I don't do it every other day. I do it if and when or just when. Um, I think there's a couple of factors uh, with with any athlete, any sport. You know, you've got you've got some players that are more natural than others. You've got some players that work harder than others, and you've got some players um, that are mentally stronger than others. Right. Um, some players that have got more heart than others and more passion and dedicate. You know, there's so much that goes into it. So I think that I've been fortunate with my dad being a boxer. He was a professional boxer and wrestler. Uh -huh. he, you know, he taught me very well when I was young <clears throat> that you win your fights in the gym, if you like. So he made me practice very hard. And um, I also did myself martial arts. I did Kung Fu and went all the way to Black Belt. I think that helped me mentally. Yeah. And um, also um, disciplined. It helped me throughout, you know, for different different aspects of the game. Right. And then my coach, Lionel Payne, also, he's, he was right there at the beginning with my dad. So he's still my coach today and my mentor. And I think, I mean, I've just spoke to him uh, uh -huh. in preparation for this. Right. Uh, so, you know, I think I've been very fortunate to have a great parents, great coach, and even now great family and okay. partner around me to, to really um, have that support. But as far as mental preparation, I think a lot of that has come with experience. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. There's no magic, no magic no. trick, I'm afraid, Matt. <laughs> and you said you, you're an, a black belt in Kung Fu, did you say? Many years ago. I couldn't do it now, but yes. <laughs> wow. That, that's, that's an interesting thing I didn't know about you there. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I imagine that would help your mental game. Definitely. To and also, not just that, the discipline required, you know, the to train and things like that. I mean... You know, to be honest, I really, um, it's really helped me in, in various aspects for sure. Yeah. Dominic is a black belt in karate. And oh, that's right. Out. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't know that. I did know that. Into yes. the martial arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it just, it just helps, I think, uh, especially as a kid. You know, I was, I was yeah. young. I started when I was like seven or eight years old. Right. And I went all the way. Uh, I did it for nine years. And I had, I had to quit. Um, simply because I was fighting in competition. Oh, um, okay. And I was, um, you know, I, again, maybe my, with my father and my coach, my mum weren't into sports, so I don't include her for that reason. But right. other than that, um, but my father and my coach were, uh, I were, I were very competitive, you know, with their help, I were very, I always wanted to be the best of right. whatever I do. Even if I can't be, that's okay, as long as I try to be and give it my best shot. And that can be as something as silly as in Canada, for example, we were the players when we had some downtime, we ended up throwing a ball into a bucket, right? Yeah, and Ashton the, Twins classic. Yes, yes, just for fun. <laughs> right. And before you know it, I I wanted to win. There's no way I was leaving until I got that ball in that bucket. <laughs> so, you know, just things like that. Um, I'm very right. competitive. Yeah. So I mean, we we kung fu. My dad knew also, I did boxing too, which my dad taught me. But with Kung Fu, my dad knew that I weren't going to quit until I got my black belt. And I got a, couple of, I got a few injuries along the yeah. way, which prevented me playing, continuing playing snooker. So he said to me, maybe once you've got your black belt, you maybe need to make a decision uh -huh. whether you're going to stay doing martial arts or do snooker and billiards. So he knew that I wouldn't quit until I got the black belt. That was my goal. That was my dream. And that's what I did. And even though I got a few injuries on this arm, which prevented me playing uh -huh. along the road. So once I got my black belt, I took the hard decision to, to tone it down and eventually I did quit. And um, um, how old were you when you started snooker and um, pool? I started playing snooker when I was 12. Uh, prior to that, I played English pool because my parents had a bar uh -huh. and it had a little table in it and I played English pool. Mm -hmm. And that's how I began, really. My parents had a, um, a, a pub, um, which had a, the first pub, had a snooker table in it, and I wanted to play on there. I weren't allowed. 
mm-hmm. and I'd sneak in sometimes and grab a beer crate and turn it upside down <laughs> and stand on it. And I got caught a few times doing that. Right. And then it was very popular on, on the TV back in the 80s. So I was uh, I really, for whatever reason, just took a love to snooker. So I used to do that. And then the change pubs, that they bought their own pub, which had a pool table. So mm-hmm. I, that's an English pool table, different to American. But I played that. And then when I was tall enough, my dad suggested that we go to uh, play snooker. Do you want to have a game of snooker in a snooker club? I said, yeah. And there was a coach there, which is Lionel Payne, my coach today. And we've been together ever since. That's great. Wow. That's that awesome. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm you very know, lucky. Very lucky, you know. They're having the first USA snooker. I know. In August. I know, I know. I've been talking to Michael Dominguez um, about that. And myself and Alison were thinking of, of uh, popping up to that. Unfortunately, the timing of it isn't great because we've got a can- Canadian event. Right. Um, the um, Tour. Yeah, or- the Predator Pro Bot series, yeah. Right. Uh, we're going to go after that. But, uh, you know, a few people have been asking if I'm going to play in it. I've been playing a bit of snooker back at home. Uh-huh. Uh, but, you know... I'm not, I'm not going to, <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't play enough, you know, to play professional women's snooker. Right. Um, I think I'll stick to pool and, and, right. and ball. one thing at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you cr- recall offhand your uh, snooker titles? I, I had them there. Um, I don't, I don't have that reference right now, but uh, I was curious about that and, you yeah. you were really big snooker early on and then transitioned more into pool. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Same as Alison and Karen did. Um, yeah, as far as my my records, I got six world championship titles in snooker. Um, I got seven European championship titles. And then I got, for example, the, the UK Open, the British Open, the Scottish Open. So I, I managed to accumulate... Um, I think it was, I don't know, 50 something titles with snooker. Um, and then I come over in 2014, uh, 2004, sorry, to, to America. Uh, where does time go? Huh? 2004, I come over to America and transition to, to pull, just like uh, following on from Alison being the first one, Karen Corbyn being the second. And uh, as we know, we had Kim Shaw, Sarah Ellaby, Julie Kelly. Val Finney come over with me. We come over together in two thousand and four, and uh, yeah, I think all of us that come over from snooker um, give it a good go. You know, we really did. We we all ranked pretty high. So. Those snooker fundamentals, the the stroke and everything, and the 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 mechanics seem so solid that when you transition to pull from that, it seems like. You know, if you, you know, the break is the main thing, I'm sure, in nine ball. But besides that, once you get the break down, now you've got such strong fundamentals in the game that that's like, I just, <clears throat> it seems like I've seen the snooker, uh, like with, and another thing I'd like to say is like, I found, I saw where both you and Allison Fisher, are on top of the Fargo ratings worldwide for women. And that's incredible because you both have been in the game for a while now and to sustain that for such a lengthy amount of time. You know, I I think people may not know that, realize, Mm -hmm. you know, you've been in the game dominating for a while. It hadn't just been this year, but Maybe we can run over, like, go over some of the wins this year. You could talk about a little bit and uh, regale us with that, if you will. Yeah, I mean, this year has been a fantastic year. And if we if we rewind, really, pre-pandemic, um, the last event we had for women, the last big event we had was the World Championships in Sanya, China, 2019. It was in December, November, December. It was December, actually. And, you know, I won that event there. Um, so that was, you know, I was, I think I was 40, 41, 40. Mm-hmm. And I was so honoured and so happy to have won it 
especially breaking that 40 age. <laughs> so, you know, I remember saying if I can win win the world championship in my 40s, I'll be over the moon. And, you know, so to have done that, I was really, um, really happy. And I remember thinking, obviously, we had no awareness of the pandemic at this point and thinking, I hope next year I can have a good year. You know, I'm playing well. La, la, la. Then the pandemic happens and um, boom, no events. So from that, um, we've gone then obviously two years without and doing the live stream stuff, which I, I, I did really well at, um, winning multiple events on the ghost doing the live stream, which I really enjoyed. Um, to then obviously the tour and the events starting again. So, so far, you know, I'm on certainly on a roll and uh, I think I've got eight events in a row now. Mm -hmm. including the 2019 world championship being the first one then the next events thereafter so that including last year and this year that's the total uh so far this year has been four i think or five in a row i'm not sure Expo, uh, that? Bremen, germany and what else? well we did um we've got if we go backwards let's think here oh ashton, Canada, Tw ashton twins classic okay Bremen. Yeah, Germany, Bremen, Germany, Predator event. Right. Then we had the Las Vegas Open. Right. Super Billiard Expo. Then we had the Northern Lights uh, WPBA event. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's five. Right. And then last year, last year I had, um, I won the Straight Pool uh -huh. Championship. I won, oh, <laughs> There's two more, two more, yeah, <laughs> yeah, two more. I'm trying to think. It could be PBA somewhere. Fairfield, we had the Fairfield one in Fairfield. Could be PBA. Mm -hmm. I won that. And I think there might be one more, but yeah. So cannot grumble. I'm had, very, very lucky and very. I happy. had been watching the um the the cue it up podcast with Night Mind in there, and um, he was like, "Can anyone beat Kelly Fisher?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking anything away from anybody um, but one thing we have we have got missing is um, we've got a lot of Asian representation uh, missing you know um, the players from like your Chen Siemens your Ruglin Amit So Jus, Wazy Chen you know they've they've been um, and I can go on and on there's a lot of Asian players that that haven't been able to come over and, and play in, and participate in our events. We've got in my dorm here in, I'm at the World Games, as you know. Right. In my dorm, I've got Brittany Bryant. She's been playing great. She's been yeah. coming and placing second, third. Um, and we've had to play each other both times. And she's playing great. Um, I've also, in the other room, we've got Yuki. Um, I can't pronounce her second name, so I won't try. And uh, she's from Japan. Again, a player that I haven't been able to come out until now. Um, at the World Games, we've got Rublin Amit playing. We've got So Ju representing Taiwan and Philippines. Also got Korea. So you know, not taking anything away from anybody, but um, we have had players missing as well. So you know, um, but I'll take it. I can only play. You know, I'm, I'm playing well. I don't care who I play. I to be honest, if I play well, they've got to play well to beat me, and that's the way I look at it. If I don't play well, then I don't deserve to win. So. It's just a matter of keeping my game to the best I can keep yeah. my game. And if anybody plays better than me, then I'll shake their hand and, and you know, fair play. Yeah. Um, on, on that match, I mean, and, and if um, they deserve to win and I've won matches where I don't deserve to win and I've lost my, you know, I've, I've also won where I do. So it's all I can do is, is just play my best and uh, pray and hope and keep practicing in order to keep a high standard and hopefully... Right win keep on winning <laughs> that's the goal kudos, kudos on that I, I look at those rankings that you know i'm not sure if people have different ideas about fargo and everything but it seems like once you get up there higher like at just a few points is a big difference and you're you're like 40 points ahead of alice and fisher from what i was looking at there that like you're you're a little bit up there above even the second down from you as far as the rankings go now i don't know like because i've heard some things about fargo like you know that uh it's not 
unless you have a big robustness that's not that accurate or something. But it seems like with all the matches you all have in, I'm sure it, it's a lot more accurate at that level. But uh, that, well, that kudos on that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, again, I don't know too much about Fargo myself. Um, for me, I focus on the, the world rankings or the WPBA rankings. Um, but, you know, I do feel as well with, with Fargo that, again, there's been a lot of players, same with the world rankings, same with the WPBA rankings. There's been players missing. So, you know, we've got to take that into account. It's nobody's fault. We've right, currently right now got Christina to catch and Margaret um, for Vova also missing from tournaments, unfortunately, due to the crisis with the Ukraine and right. Russia. And, you know, we've got to remember that, that there, yeah. is, there is some inconsistency in, in our rankings and tournaments because we're with the pandemic and currently the crisis we've got players missing. So I don't really um, try to focus too much on on the ranking on, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm really happy with my performance this year in the last two years and pre-pandemic. But my main thing is what I'm trying to say is, is that I don't really try and focus on that. I want to, I think forward thinking and I'm here at a new event. And if I can keep that role going, great if i don't i don't it's got to end at some point and um you know i just every time that i play and i i try my best and i'm there to win it and if i do you know then i'll celebrate and if i don't then i'll commiserate <laughs> either way like we'll have a, yeah you have we'll a have great a attitude <laughs> that yeah. seems like that's thank that's, you that's the attitude you want to have at that level i've been playing a long know. time i think i think um you know, 30 years from the beginning to now. And I think that uh, you have to be a, you have to learn how to lose to be able to yeah. win. You know, to be able to learn how to win. Yeah. I like so that. I think that, you know, I've always had a problem with that myself losing. So I, I that's, I think if you can be a gracious lose you in, in, in defeat and then, you know, just still keep grinding like that, that that's, probably the ideal situation well, you mentioned way, really. something about that you mentioned something about that playing the ghost does that have to do with the Iwan Simonis ride the nine tour with Gloria Jean there is that what you were referencing or is that well, something else no we did do the we did do it with Gloria Jean on the ride the nine tour yes but also with Nate Mindham um with the queue up um podcast and we we did it with One Sport TV. We did we did it with the WPBA. There was many um, different outlets that um, were platforms, should I say, that we were doing the um, ghost tour tournaments, if you like. Um, and it was brilliant. It kept pool alive yeah. during lockdown. There was a lot of players that couldn't play simply because they didn't have the facility or the chance to get to a pool table. Um, but I was fortunate that I did, and I it kept me practicing. It kept me enjoying the game. It kept me, it kept our sport alive as well for people, for the fans. Um, and I think it was fantastic on them guys for putting mm -hmm. their hard work into, um, you know, creating that platform, creating and all their time and effort that they put into that. I just enjoyed playing. I didn't have to put the work in anywhere else. But it was great for the players too. That is a very good use of the technology to to do that, especially at a tough time and you know a dark time in in the history. Really, to have that going on, but uh, that's, right. that's that that's how you adapt and overcome, as they say. I believe you know. So well, that, that's, that's awesome. right. You've only got two options, haven't you? You either lay down or you stay up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you got to right. keep pushing. Right. That's right. That's right. That's one thing that, you know, the martial arts or the, it, it's just life, isn't it, really? But, um, you know, I do think that it's been tough on a lot of people, the pandemic, and we've got to remember that, you know, that yeah. not everybody is as fortunate to whether they've got a pool table or not. Some people have had lost everything. Um, so we're, yeah. we're very lucky that, you know, yeah. we're still here yeah. and, uh, and also the amount of lives that were lost. So we're very fortunate and, that's something that I think people now have learned not to take too much for granted. Yeah. The pandemic did do a few good things along the way, I do believe. Um, yeah, it puts it's things cool. in a different perspective. A lot of gratitude. Completely, yeah. So, um, what 
about the world games there? Um, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar, you know, with what all's going on there. How is that? I, I didn't even, I wasn't, I'm sorry for my ignorance on this, but I wasn't even aware until just like, you know, last week about that and that that was going on. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that and, and what all's involved and, and just what you know about it. Well, yeah, I've played in the World Games um, twice before. Uh, it was back in 2013, back in 2009. I think we've already said about that, right? Yeah. Uh, back in 2017. Yeah. So right. basically, for the 16 players, we've got three disciplines. We've got snooker and we've got 16 men um, participating in the snooker. They've not got a women's representation. In the carom, we've got 16 men. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no women's field, if you like. And in the nine ball, we've got 16 men and 16 women. Um, so two nine ball tables, one carom table and one snooker table in the arena. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, so 16 players, there's a, I believe, random draw. I don't know. It might be seeded. I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, tomorrow is the start of the event. We've got the opening, the billiard opening ceremony tomorrow in the morning. I'm first match on. I'm playing against India. I know the lady from years ago from snooker too. She's an ex-snooker player. Um, and yeah, they're playing matches tomorrow. Uh, the following day is the first round, the last 16. And then if you win your first match, you play again on Thursday. Uh, if you win on Thursday, you play again Friday, I believe. When are we here? Tuesday. No, no, no. Sorry, I said that wrong. Tomorrow's Wednesday. That's the first. Um, right. So anybody who plays on Wednesday doesn't play on Thursday if they win. And then Friday is the quarterfinals uh, down to the semifinals. Then Saturday is the semifinal and final. Kind of sort of like the World Cup, how they did it in the brackets. No, no. it's actually single elimination, straightforward knockouts, last 16. Okay. And right. then you play off for third place for the medal. Yeah. Wow. So it goes all the way. Um, yeah, and we're here on campus. It's all the other sports. There's every country represented, more or less. And uh, I don't know for how many hundreds of different sports here. Um, it's fantastic. I've not, I only arrived last night. Um, so I'm going to head over to get the feel of it once I finished here. And uh, yeah, I'll be posting some stuff on Facebook. They've got live streaming as well, oh. which I'll be putting on my Facebook later today. Still a bit jet lagged, so um, just right. to, yeah, that was <laughs> you didn't have um, any trouble at the airport, did you? Where you had to tell somebody I could beat you with my stick? I'm a professional pro I player. Did not this time, no, it was easy this time. <laughs> no, it was a long travel, but I didn't have that problem again. You're right, <laughs> yeah. It was, um, I got in late last night, a few delays and stuff, so it wasn't till 1 a.m., something like that. Right. So, yeah, just getting in the swing of it. But what, what an atmosphere here. Like I said, we're, right. we're on the Olympic Village. It's where the Olympics was held. Right. And um, just to walk around and see all the athletes in all their gear from all the different sports. And I'm, we're going to go and take a watch of some of the other sports while we're here too. Right. So, yeah, it's, yeah no, it's all good. Basically a, a shoot-off from the Olympics. 100%. It's for the sports that haven't made the Olympics yet. It's yeah, a basically. They finally included billiards since well, 2013 or no, 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 2003 no. or something like that. Yeah, it's been since 2000 yeah. uh, because Allison got Look, gold medal twice um, and Jeanette Lee won gold medal as right. well um, years ago. Yeah, so I know it's been going for some years. Um, I couldn't tell you the exact year, but I want to say. Yeah, I kind of did a... a Wrap of and I know Jeanette Lee won a gold medal, uh, maybe the first year or something. She won it, yeah. I can't remember, I think in Taiwan, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's held in a different country every four years, basically. Right, but that's really amazing. That yeah. I'm so glad to see billiards finally included or that, that is included, even though it might be three years. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool, cool. So yeah, it's, uh -oh. it's really 
Right. Looking forward to getting out there. Yeah, and just start, yeah. Good, you know, good luck it. out there. Um, Thank you. I wanted to ask real quick. I saw a post you had about the the format, the Predator. So let's maybe we could go over that because that was an interesting format they had. It seemed like they were sets to four, two sets to four, and then if you tied, you had the shootout. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. that's the Predator Pro series. Yeah. That's what and they're... you said it added a lot of like um, suspense to the game or something like to that effect, I believe, yeah. is what you were talking about. You like the format. Well, I mean, you know, I've, I've said it and I'll say it again. We've got many tournaments. We play nine ball, we play ten ball in, in all tournaments mostly, right? So we play races to seven, races to nine, races to five. We've played everything. We play one ball on the spot, nine on the spot. Three point rule, no three point rule, magic rat, no magic rat. <laughs> you know, we've tried it all and our sport has maintained it, hasn't shot up. Um, I think this uh, new format um, of 10 ball with the races to four makes it very exciting. The shootout, as we were talking about in the first thing we talked about, you know, for viewers makes it so intense. Oh my so, god! Yeah, I mean the amount of people, the amount of feedback, and the amount of people that actually watch that. And for anybody that missed it, when I sent it to them, they're like, "Oh my god! I wish I didn't know the score. I wish I didn't know you'd won." Right. I can't imagine how. I know because you know, I, yeah. I, I was watching it live, and I was like, "Oh!" You know, I mean, in Scotland, my friends and family were watching it. They uh -huh. couldn't watch. They couldn't watch. They had to keep <laughs> coming out the room and come. So this excitement that this creates, mm -hmm. it's not ideal for the players because I could have no. lost by one shot, yeah. one spot shot. But really in a game of nine ball, if it's Hill Hill, whoever makes that one mistake loses, should lose most of the time anyway, right? So right. to me, I feel that it's a great new addition, a new format. With, it's only in the Predator Pro series. So it's not like with transfer transformed pool and its whole integrity into this new format would not. Right. It's a pro series. Uh, for any players that don't like it, don't play. The prize money is great. The, the production's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the tournament itself is, is top level. And I think that, you know, based on that, I think um, if they, we have a chance to finally get the amount of viewers that we deserve, if not more. And all it takes is for one outside sponsor to see, you know, to be interested. And not only that, with our numbers increasing, you know, it gives us a chance to get an outside industry sponsor. And mm -hmm. I just think it gives us that opportunity to take it to the next level. Right. Got you. Thinking about that, um, like, you know, pool is a world game, a world sport. You know, some say it's debatable if it's a sport. I, I say at that level, it's more of like a sport, especially when you got to grind it out through these weekend long tournaments. It was, um, I, I was thinking that um, I just totally lost my train of thought. I am so sorry. But, <laughs> um, you know, what I was trying to get into is like, it's really a world game and it's popular in a lot of countries. Why do you think it is that part of like the rule changes and spot and racking a nine ball on the spot and changing that up constantly? Seems like that's hard for fans to follow the game when the rules constantly change. Correct. But, um, and I was wondering what you thought about the future of the game and, and why it might have languished in comparison to like golf, for example. Well, I mean, I've just done a, an interview with Gloria Jean, actually. I've just done a live one, and we talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you know, in a nutshell, I think that, of course, you know, golf has been uh, going around, if you like, at a higher level than pool for a long time. So we're, we've got some catching up to do. Um, whether we'll make it to that, I don't know. But I think that we, we there's no reason why not. Um, you know, the the pool if you like with the hustler and the color of money kind of give us a little bit of a and i'm not blaming the movie because it'd be great for our sport in its right. own way but you know the stereotypical back then back when i first come to america 
was a even for myself in my head coming from the UK I imagined the pool room with uh, beer and smoking and gambling and fights and and it, you know it wasn't really like that and nowadays even more so your top players are completely committed to the sport they're athletes they're training not only on the table they're training off the table to maintain that you know the athletes mental physique and um, physical and um, you know it's totally different outlook now um, so that's the first thing there's no reason why in the future what if we can continue growing uh, why we can't you know I certainly have the goal to to reach where golf is well you know why not but Back to what you asked me um, regarding the different rules. You know, I suppose in golf you can do 18 holes, 9 holes. You can do, I'm not, I do think it's a bit confusing when you change it. Nine balls should be one rule, right? one set of rules. Ten balls should be another. And you can have, like, for example, we've got ten ball the world rules. We should have nine ball, we do have nine ball the world rules. And there's no problem if you've got, like Predator Pro, Pro Series changing that and it's they just stick to one set of rules because you know then as a viewer, Predator Pro Series is this, it's the shootout, races yeah. to four. And then you could have Predator Pro Series nine ball, for example, if they did that, then you know the rules for that. But Matchroom, I think what we're doing right now is we've got to let Matchroom have their, the good, you know, the perfect rule set. And they're sticking to that. They're maintaining consistency. Right. Predators are having, are having the Pro Billiard series uh, and they're keeping it like that and they're keeping consistency. So we've got the two going on, the two biggest promoters, if you like, and organisers uh, right now in the game and they're sticking to one set of rules. We're going to have different events that do change that up, I'm afraid. But, um, you know, I... I what, what can we do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't hey, know. I, 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 watch, I got you. I got you. You know, it, it probably just takes time, you know, especially like you said, who got worldwide kind of got that bad connotation with it. And uh, so I think it still has that stigma attached to it as part of it. But, it's getting uh, better for sure. It's getting better. Yeah, it, it's, it seems like it's making a turnaround. So, you know, we'll have to. 100%. I think right now we're, you know, it's at the best pinnacle, you know, it's right there waiting to burst. Right. Um, and I do feel that, you know, with Matchroom Pool, they're doing a fantastic job. Oh my uh, God. You know, yeah. with, with, with the, and they have been working very hard to get it to this point. And like I said, with Predator, they're doing a fantastic job. And I do believe them two together can help bring Pool up to the next level. And, and beyond, we'll never, you know, keep pushing. Right. Yeah, do. I agree. Both Predator and uh, Matchroom are really promoting the game. Um, and I like how they give back. It's like, you know, they want to profit, but at the same time, it does appear like they're giving back to the sport. That's right. So they obviously know how to make the money because you can't starve out the players and expect right. the sport to thrive. So that's that right. that's that's a good thing. And the players also, you know, they have to realize as well that they have to work a bit harder too. I think with the pandemic, we realize that, you know, we've got to we've got to be available, which they are for interviews, things like that, to promote the game the best they can in the best light, um, keep it professional, keep it, you know, keep being an athlete basically. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, you're in the limelight. You have to, you know, keep um, keep a good, a responsible. Mm -hmm. It's like you got to be an ambassador for you yourself ambassador. as well. You know, right. So we really you. appreciate your time here. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. We'll let summer. you go and get so you get you some Kelly, practice. In I wish you the best of luck, and I'll be rooting for you all the way. Thank you, Kat. Fingers, toes crossed. For yes, going. yes. Everything. <laughs> Legs, toes, ears. Exactly. I'm even asking my dog to do the same. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll try my best. I'll give it hundred percent, and um, that's all I can do. So we'll see how it goes. And we'll see you next at the Euro Tour after this. No, no. From here, I'm going to Michigan for the WPBA. 
Oh, right. Yeah. And then I come back from then. I'm actually going on a vacation. Okay, another so holiday. My next one will be That's Canada good. for the Predator Pro Series in Canada. All right. Holidays are good. <laughs> yes, they Put your are. your mind back in. Got to. Got to yeah, the balance. Yeah, yeah unwind and then yeah. get ready again. That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, Kelly, I've got plenty of good stuff here to write this up and uh, we'll right. get this story and we really appreciate your time and you've answered a lot of good questions here. Thank you, um, Patrick. Think, it's been yeah, a pleasure. Nice wanna... to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I know we've chatted through the years, but, um, you know, I, I know uh, you, you're you just all class, so we appreciate you again yeah. today, and good luck out there, and, right. um, you know, go ahead and beat India. Sorry to India, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to cross your toes, too. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll catch you again real soon. All right? All right. All you right. have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.